Mike Gravel. Senator Mike Gravel is now with us from near Monterey, California. Mike, welcome back to the program. How are Thank you? Thank you. I've got one, one insight, I hope. Well, I hope you have more <laughs> than that. <laughs> that it's on the, uh, the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm sure the lady who, who nominated him realizes that that doesn't go to Sweden. That goes to a, uh, a committee of the Norwegian legislature. And uh, and that uh, and that committee uh, can be lobbied. In fact, that's what the whole process is. So in the course of because they'll make the announcement in sometime in October of uh, nineteen. But I I think it would be very valuable for people to contact uh, the various people on the committee, or if you could find out the committee membership, uh, Joe and uh, put that up so people could uh, then get that information and contact the committee and lobby them. Uh, and this is, of course, how uh, Obama got to be get the Peace Prize, because the deadline is in January, as and, that's, and she's met that deadline. And of course, Obama had just been elected. He was two, two weeks into his presidency when he was nominated to the... <clears throat> Uh, for the Peace Prize. And of course, the committee, uh, in my mind, foolishly said that, well, if we give him the Peace Prize, maybe he'll act like a peace president. Well, that obviously did not take place. And uh, in fact, when he made the speech <laughs> to, before the, uh, the, the uh, in receiving the Peace Prize, it really was a war speech. It was, the, you know, just wars. And of course, when you talk about peace, the, the, there's, there's no such a thing as a just war uh, because just wars are set up in advance. It's like the First World War setting up the Second World War when the First World War was supposed to end the war to end all wars. It's, it's ridiculous. But, but since the tactic, uh, and I would hope that Julian would be, uh, be out of the embassy and free and safe uh, before next October, but in the meantime, I would hope that uh, we would try to lobby the committee, individual members on the committee, that uh, this would be very, very significant for the cause of world peace. And that is through a, a process of informing the people in the world as to what their leaders are doing. And that's what uh, Julian was doing par excellence. So that's the, the, the uh, insight I want to add. Uh, I don't know if I could add anything more other than uh, we talked in terms of uh, the last time I was on about getting the Labor Party to, uh, to uh, put pressure on the uh, May and her party. Uh, and, uh, and I believe a member of uh, the Labor backbencher did come up with a statement about uh, supporting Julian Assange. Uh, and so here again, if we could get uh, uh, Orban to uh, the minority leader, if we could get him to weigh in, that would put really great pressure on the uh, UK government, which might react by just bagging it rather than get all the heat. So those are my two insights, uh, Joe. I don't think I can add anything more than that. Well, I think those are brilliant insights, particularly the idea of lobbying the members of the Nobel Committee, which should be public information. It's something I could dig out, and I would publish that, and uh, and hopefully people would take that up, the people watching us, and we can make more out of that on social media too, because that would be a, it would be a tremendous thing if, in fact, he would get that prize. Uh, I didn't see a lot of media coverage about his nomination, uh, which tells you something right there. That again, the establishment, the establishment media, which does the bidding for powerful people rather than people, uh, didn't see that as newsworthy. Just as they didn't see Giuliani's remark as newsworthy. Uh, Mike, I don't think you were on last week when we talked about Giuliani, but you know what I'm talking about. He was on Fox News. Oh, yes. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm very well aware. I was... I was very excited by Giuliani's statement. I thought it might have a little bit of suction on moving Donald Trump, but maybe, maybe at some point Trump, you know, is so erratic in, in, in what he does 
that he, he may pick up on Giuliani's statement in a conversation with Giuliani and react to it with a tweet. So that's possible in the future. Uh, let's just hope. But there, there are several tactics that are being employed. One, uh, the uh, peace, the Nobel Peace Prize, and we can campaign on that. Two, uh, we can campaign on trying to get the Labor Party uh, to endorse the release of uh, or the stopping the, the British government from encircling the the embassy so that uh, Julian could come out uh, as a free person. So we've got two areas, uh, that, uh, and I think others can be developed as this year going forward with advertising. Uh, and I want to commend you, Joe, for, for what you're doing in this regard, because I don't know of anything else that's truly organized to try and help Julian. And if Julian uh, is free, uh, later on free to move out, uh, I think that uh, Consortium News would get a lot of credit for what it's done. Well, that's very kind of you, Mike. And we're just doing what we can. I mean, it's a, it's a big story. This is an historic press freedom case. I don't know why any journals wouldn't be all over this, uh, just as objectively reporting on what's going on. That's right. But uh, then you don't, you don't want to put your hopes too much in, in the mainland me, mainstream media, which, of course, is, is corporate owned and, uh, and plays to the corporate interest. And I, one of your persons was pointing out earlier that, you know, you just know if you're in corporate media, you don't have to get orders to act a certain way. You just know that if you act a certain way, that will advance your career. <laughs> and, and so that's the name of the game is the mainstream media knows how to advance their career. But this is the same thing in politics. Why is it that the likes of Henry Kissinger and others are always promoted? Uh, and generals are promoted when they've done terrible jobs in their careers. Uh, or, or politicians, the same. You know, I'm still resentful of the treatment that mainstream media gave to McCain. You know, McCain never saw a war that he didn't want to enter into. And he still had the view that we should have won the Vietnam War, which, of course, uh, is ridiculous. But that, that's McCain's uh, light motif, so to speak. Uh, and then, of course, you've got uh, these generals like, oh, the only adults in the room are a bunch of hawks. That, that's really who the adults were. And, uh, and, and now you, uh, poor Trump has gone from bad to worse with, uh, with uh, uh, what's, what's his name? Who's a security advisor? Bolton? Uh, yeah, John Bolton. Yeah, yeah. He, he's horrible. He's horrible. So uh, at least the, uh, the other generals were, were, were more uh, gifted in hiding their main thesis which is continued war. And, and, and so then you get the liberals who excoriate uh, uh, Trump because he was going to pull out the troops. That doesn't speak well of the liberal invasionists, and we have a whole cadre of them. Yeah, I like that term, uh, instead of liberal interventionists, liberal invasionists. Well, for, speaking of Kissinger, of course, uh, I wonder who lobbied for him because he got the Nobel Peace Prize which put well, a stain on that prize. Well, that, that, that was, uh, well, of course, the, it was a co-issue. Uh, he and uh, his Vietnamese uh, uh, negotiator uh, were both given the Nobel Peace, Peace Prize, but the, but the Vietnamese person would not accept it. He did not feel that that was a, an, an action of peace. Uh, and, of course, Kissinger would reach out for any honor that he could get to ensure his continued viability uh, to mainstream media. Well, at it's least tough. in Kissinger's case, they waited until after he, uh, you know, was involved in the secret bombing of Cambodia and the overthrow of an elected government in Chile and numerous other crimes to give him the prize, where in Obama's case, they just gave it to him in advance and waited for him to commit these atrocities. Well, they, they gave it to him to try to influence him. But uh, you couldn't influence Obama. He just, he, he, he was on his own pedestal. I don't think they're going to try that again. Uh, at least I hope not. Give somebody a, an award so that they would live up to it rather than having lived up to it. 
Well, yeah. that's right, because it was so embarrassing with that. But <clears throat> but they every so often they do uh, mainstream stuff. But with Julian Assange, you're quite right. It's it's what he's done at this point in time that's why he should be issued the Peace Prize. You know, it was his actions that brought about the uh, the whole uh, Arab Spring. Uh, the so there's enough fodder out there to feed to the committee as arguments for issuing the prize to uh, Assange. But unfortunately, the decision won't be made till September, October of next year. And I would hope that we would have liberated Julian uh, from the embassy safely uh, to a, a look uh, to go where he would like to go. Well, just to uh, completely confirm what you said about how corporate media works, having worked in it myself for too long, through almost three decades, you absolutely nailed it. You don't get the memo saying report this. You know what they want. And if you step out of line slightly and try to put in a story that you know is going to be undermining of the, the agenda that corporate media has, and that agenda, especially on foreign news, is to support American interests abroad, not to report objectively, what ha what's happening in an international crisis or in any international story where countries are just clashing because they have interests and nobody's a good guy. They're all bad guys. Some are worse than others. But uh, to present the Americans as the good guys and, and to minimize and delete and omit, omit the positions of Iran, of Russia, of North Korea, of Cuba, all the so-called enemies of the United States, which suddenly become the enemies of the corporate media, too. Uh, they no longer have an objective view and see these uh, countries as players in an international dispute or an international story of any kind, so that it becomes the American story in America. But now other nations do that with their media too, but they don't seem to pretend like ours does that we're the best and most objective and blah, blah, blah. So you were absolutely hitting nail on the head. Did you want to say something else, Mike, about that? No, I think that uh, I, I'll have to excuse myself at this point in time but I do want to encourage you to continue what you're doing in this regard, uh, using uh, consortium news as the main advocate, main public advocate for for Julian Assange's freedom. Well, I thank you very much for that, Mike. And thanks okay. for joining us today. Okay, thank you. Okay.